One of the things that's interesting, there's a bunch of uh, armored personnel carriers and stuff like that with tractors, basically. Believe it or not, the, the whole tractors and, and armored personnel carriers and armoring with, 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 uh, with tract equipment and stuff like that actually comes from the mining eras. About uh, probably around year 1200 or so, basically, when you're working in your mine, a lot of my mines are like, are like, you know, like the roof is like 200 feet above, above where they're working or like, or like 80 feet above, you know, where there's, where there's this roof and, and like, you know, and so like pieces can fall 80 feet or, or 200 feet from the roof, you know, a little rock can fall off and fall 80 feet or a hundred feet and go <laughs> into, into something. So if you're working in a tractor or working in equipment and that rock falls on the equipment or you're just walking around, you know, even with a hard hat, you know, it breaks your neck. Like, like I said, I've, I've, I've had, I've had miners with broken necks. I've had micro, uh, uh, miners with, um, where it cr actually cracked the, the safety helmet open, you know, and, you know, concussion, even cracked the skull open or something like that. It was really bad. Or something. I forget what the deal was. I don't know if it cracked the skull open that time. Anyway, though, but I've had miners that have gotten serious injuries where, you know, the slab of rock just, you know, like, five foot slab of rock just go just lets loose all of a sudden and just falls and their the equipment will be working underneath and then blam you know and um and and there's a couple of miners that that, that, <laughs> that, that that said he thanked the lord when he saw that rock because it came over the cab and it actually like like it shows there's pictures of of it where it's like the safety cage and the safety cage is all bowed out and the hood is all smashed in from this rock face that it, it just kind of fell off and it was like a yay thick slab five foot wide and basically it hit the safety cat cage and actually crushed in the uh the the, the, the what's called the hood of the tractor um of the, of the equipment and um and it bowed like all four posts basically bowed out on this uh, on this i think it was a steamroller or some, or some sort of equipment thing there's pictures of it and stuff anyway anyway he i anyway my safety procedure saved his life basically anyway like I say, throughout basically what 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 really what really makes me you know what really gave me a lot of power, even though I was nice and cool, is that is that um, is that I did all these things that saved people's lives, like the safety cages, like there were people that didn't want to do that. It's like you know, it's like five, it's like twenty or a hundred extra dollars or three hundred or or eight hundred extra dollars for a fucking safety cage. Like why not? Um, so I always provided them with over, with any of my miners, you know, and stuff like that. And actually, even in some in some environments, there were actually like armored personnel carriers where it's like <laughs> full protection, whatever. But then later on, you know, we refined it to basically where it's just a safety cage, and so you know, we start thinking about where it's going to come from and stuff like that. Anyway, and there's actually pictures of whole steamrollers where the roof collapsed and it killed the the, the driver and squashed this the, the steamroller, like. It pancaked it like it was like a three foot high bulge when this apparently the the mountain shifted or something like that. Anyway, there's a lot of pictures of dead of of dead or injured miners and where it's like, well, nothing would have saved them. So, anyway, anyway, that's why I started doing mine safety and actually, like like I said, I actually sent an engineer into the, the, that one mine that that the mountain that eats men. Um, I sent a British um, engineer over there to basically take a look at the mountain that eats men and figure out because there was a contamination problem there uh the water was getting contaminated from the cyanide there was also uh mine structural integrity they're looking at the mine and they're like well the mine's basically structurally unsound they've done too many whatevers and basically it's going to come down if anyway and i think we we ended up deciding to go ahead and let it loose or something or they, we can't they came up with some plan to keep mining or something like that anyway and 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 some of the mines where 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 they had gotten to that point where they had mined everything they could they could possibly mine it's like okay turn into an open pit mine screw it go ahead and level it and that's how i i'm the one that actually started the open pit mining i was like let's just go ahead and get move that dirt I'm like are you and you're like yep Start going. <laughs> anyway, and but because we can get ninety eight percent of the metal out of the rock, so it's like almost everything has something in it. So anyway, almost everything. Some things it's like, well, you're getting a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of that, and it's not really worth it. But oh well. <laughs> anyway, but 
Anyway, you know, with with big enough mining equipment, you can do some some crazy thing where it's where it's like, well, we're getting one percent of minerals out of this stuff. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and I'm going through all that effort to get one percent. Yep, but we're doing a lot of material, so <laughs> it's enough to pay the wages. <laughs> so anyway, um, I do a lot of that stuff. You know, a lot of the biggest mines were mine. Because it's like, well, at 1%, I'm still making a little bit of money, I guess. Like, well, it's a cool thing anyway. <laughs> it's like, well, it's cool, I guess. <laughs> you know, every little bit of counts, I guess, right? <laughs> a lot of these mines, it's like, I'm not really actually making all that much money. You know, by the time you pay for everything, you know, it's like, I'm actually just making dollars a day. Like, six, like one of the mines, I was making $60 a day. Woo! Ooh, big money! After you pay for all the equipment and pay for everyone, it's <laughs> I'm making sixty dollars a day or three it's three hundred dollars a day or something, but it was a constant three hundred dollars, so anyway. Much as the lawyer makes. Like back in nineteen twenty or eighteen hundred, I was making fifteen pounds a day of British money. Uh no. Yeah, and that's when everyone was getting paid like a bit a day or something like that. Now nowadays technically it's trillions. Well, I mean I got I got eight hundred galaxies that are done, so technically I mean I was giving up planets. I was like, eh, I don't really need it. I don't really need it. I don't really need it. I was giving up countries. I was like, I don't really need Europe. I don't really need Russia. I don't really need Mexico. But America my country. I definitely didn't need Mex I mean, Africa. I was like, uh, no. I mean, even America is like, well, I mean, I only really, I was like, I don't really need the whole America. I guess just California. I don't know. But America, basically, I mean, I, you know, it's my country. Anyway, I don't know. You know, I mean, I loved every country. I loved, uh, I loved Lithuania. I loved, I loved, loved, love Italia. I mean, that's the problem, too. I mean, you get to know the people, you work with them, and then... And you do all these great, wonderful buildings. I mean, I was just trying to make beautiful places. Like, I was just trying to encourage tourism, really. Like, I wanted people to travel, to use my ships and use my aircraft. Like, I'm an aircraft manufacturer and inventor. I'm an aircraft inventor. I mean, if nobody actually goes anywhere, I, it kind of sucks. <laughs> I have all these beautiful aircraft, and nobody wants to travel. That's why, uh, like I say, on the, on the Titanic, the, the, the song that they would sing going to the shore of the, of the islands, and they would do uncharted islands, where people would pretend, they, they, they would dress up in hula dance and hula skirts, and they'd basically like, oh, you've come to our island, finally. Uh, they would do stuff like that. And, um, and it was like this, this little fun thing, a little, little fun activity for, um, for rich people or whatever. And they would sing, uh, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily, 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 because it would get everyone rowing together. And they would all row to the, to the shore. Because uh, you have like a bunch of people that never rowed before. <laughs> anyway, so getting them coordinated was, was a little bit of an issue with the Titanic. So anyway, uh, I mean, tour companies, you know, the, the Titanic, that's, you know, LS. They used to say LS, Titanic. And it said Lucifer Star on the side. Anyway, yep, history. It's in the picture somewhere. I think they tried to erase it or something. But anyway, it's kind of rude. 